Now, let's take a look at Liskov's substitution principle. So it states that objects in a program should be replaceable with instances of their subtypes without altering the correctness of that program. So basically, if we have subtypes, so subclasses of a superclass, for example, the NPC, we want them to act as they were NPC and not if uh, they need some special conditions. So let's go back to our code and analyze those classes a bit. Okay, we are back in our project. I'm going to go to scripts and open up the NPC. Uh, actually, let's open the NPC enemy. Great. So what we can see here is that enemy extends the NPC. Since we have created those classes in the previous video, you should be fairly familiar that NPC, if we right click and go to the definition, has unity event and audio source. So we are assuming that every NPC will have some sound played and will have the audio event. And we have the awake when we are getting the audio source. And we have interact that plays the audio source and invokes the on speak event. And we can get the text. Okay. If I go to our NPC enemy, we can see that our NPC enemy extends the NPC and it adds some functionality. So it finds the player and calls on it receive damage. So this is a good example of how we would extend the behavior of interact without changing the definition of the interact that is inside our NPC class. So uh, this makes it this is basically it for list of substitution principle. So we can substitute our NPC enemy for the NPC and we have added some functionality to the interact without modifying the definition of our interact. We are still calling the base.interact. So we want to uh, on call on speak event and we want to play a sound. And in addition to that, we are calling on our player receive damage. And of course, we can refactor this code to pass to this interact maybe a game object that calls it so we can call on this object some methods but in any case we are complying with the npc definition of the interact and if we go to our npc friendly it doesn't even override this but if we would like to add some functionality what we would do is to simply override our interact method and here add some functionality so basically that's the that's it for our risk of substitution principle and as I have previously mentioned, those rules or those principles or rather those tips are uh, very interconnected. So if we apply open close principle, chances are that we are complying with the list of substitution principle and dependency inversion principle. And then we do not have to worry about them so much. So our code gets better and better if we, if we apply only some of those principles. Great. So I hope this short a description of the list of substitution principle gave you some idea about it okay in the next video we are going to take a look at interface segregation principle so see you there